Hey everybody, <clears throat> uh, welcome today to NERDS, uh, this is October the 30th, uh, 2021, it's almost Halloween, one more sleep till Halloween to put in a very Dickensian manner, it's been a pretty neat week actually, uh, most of the stuff I launched with a uh, new Mystery Science Theater 3000 and Riff Tracks as usual. Um, there was the Cinematic Titanic offering, uh, Blood of the Vampire, which is a pretty solid episode. It's a uh, Filipino vampire movie from the 70s, which takes place in 1920s Mexico. So. There you go. Uh, it's, it's a neat episode. It's a neat riff. Uh, watching those, some of the jokes are dated, but that, that is to be expected. Uh, but it's still pretty funny episodes. It's neat. Um, watched a lot of Mystery Science Theater shorts, which are, those are always fun to go back to. You know, when you're ever feeling down, that's always a good thing to go with. Uh, there was, I watched The Horrors of Spider Island on Mystery of Science Theater 3000, which is a classic episode. It's a kind of a German cheesecake type movie with a lot of dancing girls uh, in more peril than would probably be actually accurate. Uh, but yeah, it was an old Alexander Darcy vehicle and he gets turned into a kind of a spider type guy. It's not really a spider, not really a spider-man. Uh, it's kind of a fuzzy, fuzzy gentleman. Uh, but it's a really good episode and I suggest it. There was also the new riff track that came out was Teenage Space Vampires, which is done by Bridget and Mary Jo. And is really bizarre. It's it's a '90s movie. Uh, it's done by the same guys that did the subspecies films, and there's not a lot to it. Uh, not the riff was good, but there's not actually a lot to it. Um, the it's made in Canada and Romania. Uh, a lot of the actors. Had very peculiar voices. I believe it's Canadians or Romanians trying to do kind of Beverly Hills accents, which is quite odd and entertaining. Uh, I also there was the Riff Tracks Live of Amityville Four, and that one was pretty amazing. Uh, I always look forward to the Riff Tracks Lives. And this is no exception. Um, it was a really solid one. So it has basically no relation to the Amityville movies. And it doesn't even take place in Amityville. Uh, there, It's about an evil lamp. I'm not kidding. It's, an, it's about an evil lamp. And I think it's like only one or two people that actually get killed in it. Uh, and there's, you know, they do very well with it on the Rift Tracks Live. Uh, they have a short beforehand. It's a safety short, which is positively lynching. Uh, there's a odd... It oddly revolves around salted tomatoes, even though it's about workplace safety. It's It'll probably be available on the Rift Tracks uh, website, so you can check it out there. And that's neat. Um, I saw, yesterday I saw uh, a screening of Nosferatu at a place in my town called Blue Moon Drive-In, and it's you know, a wonderful place, and also, uh, it's a great movie, you know, it's a classic movie, it's just an incredible piece of uh, filmmaking. You know, there's 
so many weird angles to it. Max Shrek's performance is just very inhuman. Uh, there are a lot of neat touches. There, there was a lot of cold imagery if you actually look. So that's pretty neat. Um, we saw the Cowboy Bebop trailer, and uh, it looks a lot better than the first trailer where it's like they're jumping from comic panel to comic panel. This one looks Bebop, you know? Uh, I hate to judge things before they come out. I'll give the show a try. Uh, but I don't know, it seems odd to redo Bebop. It's why mess with, with perfection? But I'll give it a chance. Uh, mostly I saw Dune which was pretty cool. Uh, I think the scope of, I think the scope of the movie fit Dune very well. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that Villanova gets right. There's a lot of stuff he gets kind of wrong, actually. Uh, one of the, the things is that the effects, as they are, are quite simple, actually. Like, when they do the weirding ways, the voice, it's just, it's a person speaking, added over with reverb, added over with uh, the sound of Benny Jeffrey Mother, so it's neat. Um, there's, and yeah, like when the Mentats use their calculating powers, their eyes just go white for a second, then come back to normal. So it was pretty cool. Like, everyone's very well cast in the movie, and uh, it's neat. Although, my main problem with that was that it's not alien enough. There's not enough, you know, there's not enough weird stuff. It looks very dark. It looks very saturated. But, you know, it's it looks very much like the Lynch version, right? It's not actually that much that... Uh, strays from that. I mean, the still suits look basically identical. Uh, I always like the design of the Sci-Fi Channel version, which was kind of a balance between normal and alien. Uh, I think Moebius' designs for the Hodorowski Dune, they would have been cool, but I, don't, I think it would have been a bit much. But, yeah, they're, all in all, it's a good movie, and I liked it. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, so happy Halloween to everyone. I hope you, uh, I hope you go out. I hope you have fun. I, but I hope you're, you know, still COVID safe. Uh, it's going to be pretty neat. Now I'm going out tonight, I believe. And also, uh, today in a few hours, I'm going to a Fathom event of, uh, that's a double bill of the Invisible Man and the Wolf Man, so I'm looking forward to that. And, yeah, that's essentially it. Uh, so happy Halloween, everyone. And I'd like to thank you all for, you know, clicking on this, for watching this. Uh, I do this every Saturday, so I'll be back. Um, remember to like, comment, subscribe. If you like it, press like really like it, press subscribe. And if you really want to tell me what's on your mind, uh, comment, but please be civil. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, everyone remember, Tulip Shall Grow.